All right, now we're back into Maya. So let's have a look at how we can read and manipulate matrices in Maya. So first off, let's just focus on a normal transform. And if we take this guy and we open up the node editor, now let's just go through, show all, and let's look at the matrix. So we've got a couple of different matrices, um, kind of outputs and an input here. Quick note, this offset parent matrix is specific to Maya 2020. So if you're not seeing that, don't worry. We'll, we'll cover that later on. Now for the first two here, the ones that says matrix and, and the inverse matrix, that's basically your local transform values. So this will basically just output any kind of the same values that you have in your channel box and the inverse matrix for those values as well. Now the parent matrix and the parent inverse matrix, they're pretty fun because what they do is that they will give you the world matrix for the parent object of this node. Now that's really, really powerful for um, um, from kind of a lot of these kind of matrix setups. So we'll, we'll come back to that a bit later on as well. So again, that's basically, if we look at here, um, what we have as well, we have the world and the world inverse matrix of this node. And so if I just group this, you know, and if we do that, now this group one is the parent let me just find this again, is the parent of this locator. So if we were to get the parent matrix from this node, it would be exactly the same as getting the world matrix from this node. Because again, just to double check, locator is child of group one. So basically that's how we're getting the parent matrix. The X4 matrix as well is supposed to be the same as the matrix, but in some sort of different format. I'm not 100% sure on that. I usually just use the, the matrix and the inverse matrix. Now, what can you actually use these things for? Well, there's not in, in normal Maya, well, in Maya pre-2020, you really could, uh, didn't have the opportunity or the ability to connect matrices directly. So what you had to do is you had to decompose the matrix. Now, how does that look like? Well, there's a node called decompose matrix that basically takes an input matrix. So if we take the matrix here, we input that, and we look here, it will basically tell us the so the matrix that it's getting in and then it will show us the values that it will be outputting. So all of these, uh, these are all the same things that we looked at previous, right? So from a matrix, we can get out the translate, the rotate, the scale, the shear, and it also gives us the rotation as a quaternion. Um, that's not something that we'll touch on in this topic, but basic quaternions is um, useful for rotations. So it's a lot used in uh, in games as well because it, they're a lot more stable than uh, Euler rotations. Now, as soon as we have this right, now we could, let me just make a new locator. We can now start to basically connect up these values, right? So we have translate, let's do rotate, scale, and shear just for fun. Right? So now that we have those, you can now see that we're getting values going in here. And if we move this, this bottom one here, it moves exactly the same and it rotates exactly the same and it scales exactly the same but they're offset. Why is that? Well, it's because like what I said is we're now currently getting the matrix. 
which is the local values of this locator. And remember that for this one, we have this offset, which is basically on the group. Now, if we change this to be the world matrix instead, you can now see, boom, this, I'm going to offset this just like a tiny bit here so that we can see it. You can now see that these two are exactly the same. No matter what you're going to, going to do with this now, even if we move the group, this is now going to follow perfectly. Now what we've done here is basically a pair matrix. <laughs> because, well, it's, it's a very, very simple pair matrix. The issue right now is that this is going to follow this, um, the input locator in world space correctly. Let's just rename these so that, let's just call this input lock. Let's just call this like lock offset. Um, well, input lock offset. Just so that we don't. And this will be output lock. And let me just get rid of that, right? And this one as well, because I just want it. Now, now that we basically have that, cool, we can move this around and they follow perfectly. But another really cool thing about um, a parent constraint is basically the fact that if I, you know, if I group the output lock as well, let's just call that output lock offset. And if I move that around, it should still match up into world space. But it's not now, right? So that's a bit of an issue. So how can we get around that? Well, if we're thinking about what's really happening here is that because we're, we're connecting in this by direct values, what we're doing is we're outputting all these, this matrix, this exact world matrix into this local space in, in this group. So what's happening is that these are matching perfectly, but this offset group is adding to that. It's basically, you know, doing an offset to it. So basically what we need to do here now is that we need to remove that offset. So if we can remove that offset from this matrix, then we should basically be calculating that back. So this is where uh, multiply matrices comes in and also allowing to use the parent matrix, the parent inverse matrix, all right? So if I get a multi matrix node, which is the bread and butter along with the decomposed, the malt matrix is a bread and butter node for doing all this. Okay, so let's look at here. So what do we wanna do? Well, we want to take this, but we want to remove this uh, movement. So for now, let's just take this in here. Then let's see. If we can't, oh, is that not going to, ooh, that was an interesting my little thing there. There we go. And let's just try, let's just take this here now, just to be very clear about what we're doing. Now let's take the world inverse matrix of this and see what happens. Well, nothing, because I haven't connected this up. And what do you know? All right. I can now move this around. I can rotate it. I can scale it. I can do whatever I want. And this will still match up to the input locator perfectly. And that's basically because what we're doing here, right, is that we're taking that world space position of the offset group but we're doing the reverse of it, right? We're doing the negative version of it. So as soon as we're, we're basically kind of backtracking that. Now, just to kind of go back to what I was showing earlier, what's another th nice thing about the kind of parent constraint is that as soon as you have it set up, right, you can just move that object around and the constraint will still work. Now, if I move this, this locator here, into 
you know, another group, if I grouped it again and moved it, now we still have the same issue, right? Now I would have to get in and get the world inverse matrix from this guy instead, right? And this is where, let's just keep that. This is where the parent inverse matrix that I mentioned earlier really comes in handy because it allows you to basically say, hey, just get my parent, get the inverse matrix of that. So as I mentioned, the parent matrix and the parent inverse matrix, they're always going to be the world space matrix for the parent object. So let's try and take the output lock and I'm just going to hide these guys. No, actually I'm just going to keep them. So instead of getting the world inverse matrix from the offset, I'm going to get the parent inverse matrix from the output lock. If I do that, boom, we're back in. So even though I now have this extra node in there, you know, I can add in a new one, I can add another one, and it's just always going to work. I can even, even if I un, um, unparent it or I parent it back in, it's always going to work with that. And, you know, I can move this. That's always still going to work. So let me just kind of clean that up a bit and just remove these and give you guys a bit of a view of the setup here. So just to go over this again, what we want to do is we get the world matrix from the object that we want to they want to follow the driver object. We put that into a multiply matrix, a bulk matrix, and then to make sure that this object always follows it, we have to remove the world space offset that the parent is applying. And to do that, we get the parent inverse matrix and we multiply that as the second part. Now to get that back into our object, or to, to get it to actual like translation, rotation, scale, shear values, we have to use the decompose matrix node. Um, like I mentioned in Maya, you do have uh, a new actual input, but for any any time before Maya 2020, you always had to use the decompose matrix. Cool, so that's a quick little rundown of the most basic bread and butter things that you really need to use in Maya.